like and subscribe to this channel for more content. Thank you. You're watching the Bostral story. Sit back and relax. Ain't this young money? Young money, yeah. What's this? About this action, man. We is out here, man. 2IMB. man. GDN. 2IMB. College Grove. Back towards the land. I'm back towards the S, man. Back towards the S. Fuck. Walking, man. We at, man. Fish world. We on feet. We on Boss watch. trail, man. Oh, gee, man. We out here. Bostrell was STL's top hitter. He was allegedly involved in three murders at the age 16. In the beginning, STL was looked at as a weak set. At the time they were only known to be fighters, Bostrell made STL a dangerous hood by putting in work. According to FBG Cash, Bostrell kept the hood safe. Not only was he the number one shooter, he provided other members with guns. To this day, he's one of STL's most respected members. This is his story. Rodney Stewart also known as Bostrell was born April 11, 1995 in Chicago, Illinois. Him and his family lived on the low end before moving to St. Lawrence. His mother Lataffer was well known in Newtown. She had a reputation for being wild. Some even called her crazy. Lataffer was known to be a hustler as well. Bostrell and his younger brothers Ray and Ron learned a lot about the streets from watching their mother. Bostrell and his brothers would eventually move in with their grandmother Sheila in the Jeffrey Manor neighborhood. At the time, Bostrell was into martial arts and sports. Basketball was his favorite sport to play. Even in the snow Bostrell wanted to shoot hoops. Bostrell was a well-behaved respectful child. He enjoyed going to school and was very intelligent. According to his grandmother, Bostrell made good grades and loved to learn. He read a lot of books and spent a lot of time at the library. Around 2009, Bostrell go and lived with his mother Lataffer at 6347 St. Lawrence. Lataffer's house became a hangout spot for Bostrell and his friends. FBG Duck and Brick were like family to Bostrell. Lataffer and Duck's mother Lashina grew up together and were close friends. They all knew each other from the low end. Around this time, Bostrell's younger brother Ray began making a name for himself in the Jeffrey Manor neighborhood. He claimed a renegade gang by the name of Lafa. Ray and Ron were both still living with their grandmother, but often came to visit Bostrell and Lataffer. By 2010, Bostrell was dealing drugs and hanging with older guys such as FBG Cash. Selling drugs was easy for Bostrell. Lataffer basically ran a crack house. Thousands of dollars was made at 6347. When STL was created, Bostrell was one of the first members. After Tuka was killed in 2011, Bostrell began buying guns and going out on hits with other STL, Mob and Jero City members. At the time TYMB was STL and EBT biggest ops. A lot of fights and shootouts often took place. STL EBT pretty much bullied TYMB and even allegedly killed a few of their members. Although Bostrell was respected in the neighborhood, some EBT members still looked at him as a goofy. One time Baby Greg from EBT asked Bostrell to see his gun, when Bostrell gives him the gun, Baby Greg walked off with it aggressively. STL didn't do anything about it. They decided to just charge it to the game. Bostrell only bought more guns. The beef between Tukaville and Wick City became deadly when STL took credit for killing O.D. Perry. K.I. was the one who made STL huge targets. She constantly taunted her ops on social media. Bostrell was basically the only member of STL who had guns. KI was flashing EBT members' guns in her photos. They would often let her borrow their guns to shoot at the ops. Seaball went to jail for shooting a guy months before O.D. Perry was killed and was sentenced to 11 years. Dutchie and Bostrell were allegedly STL top shooters at the time. Lil B and Bostrell became close friends. The two allegedly went on multiple hits together. On July 17, 2011, Bostrell allegedly catch his first body.
Marcus London also known as Boldy from 600, was shot in the head on the 6000 block of South Prairie Avenue at around 12.55 a.m. He was pronounced dead at 4.30 p.m. Boldy was 19 years old. On September 13, 2011, Bostrell along with Dome from Jero City allegedly chased down D. Thang from 600 and killed him. Dome was arrested and charged with the murder. He didn't tell on the other gunman and was only sentenced to 12 years. Many believe that Bostrell was the one who actually murdered D. Thang. If that's true, then D. Thang would be Bostrell's second body. On February 16, 2012, Bostrell allegedly catch his third and final body. Bostrell along with another STL member was out looking for ops near Parkway Gardens. At around 6.30 p.m., Bostrell allegedly shot 19-year-old Sheroid Liggins in the head from across the street using a red beam. Sheroid was found laying on the ground minutes later and was rushed to the hospital. He was pronounced dead days later. Sheroid was a loved Oplock member. He's the younger brother of Oplock's murder. Many say that Sheroid was a peaceful guy. He enjoyed drawing and doing hair. Many don't know that Sheroid was a singer. If he was alive today he would most likely be a famous R&B artist. His death broke a lot of people's hearts. O Block 600 wanted Bostrell dead. The word went around fast that he was Sheroid's killer. The police began harassing Bostrell after Sheroid was killed. In June of 2012, Bostrell, Duchy and a few other Tukaville members had allegedly shot up O Block and ran back to St. Lawrence. After making it back to St. Lawrence, they were aggressively approached by two officers in a squad car. Bostrell and Duchy take off running. Bostrell was hit with a squad car and Duchy was shot by an officer. The officer claimed that Duchy had a gun, however no weapon was found on the scene. Duchy and his family filed a lawsuit against the Chicago Police Department and it was later settled out of court. As I said before, Bostrell was basically the only STL member who had guns at the time. When other STL members needed guns, they ran to Bostrell. Members such as Medell and Man Man were even carrying around BB guns. One day Bostrell let FBG Young use the gun to walk somewhere in the neighborhood. At the time STL was feuding with members of Jero City. Bostrell was on crutches after being ran over by the police, and Duchy was on house arrest. When Young and other STL members were walking through the neighborhood, a Jero City member fired shots at them. For some reason Young didn't return fire. Bostrell heard the gunshots from his house and thought that FBG Young shot at Jero members. When Young and the others returned, Bostrell was upset with Young when he found out that he didn't shoot back. He told him that he's making STL look weak. Other hoods were already giving STL a hard time because KI was false claiming bodies. Bostrell was also friends with Lil Jojo from Brick Squad. Lil Jojo heard about all the work Bostrell put in. This was around the time he dropped BDK. Lil Jojo was the next big thing in Chicago. Bostrell was a part of the BDK movement. Lil Jojo even rapped about Bostrell beating up Lil Dirk. Many don't know that Bostrell rapped as well. He was already becoming famous on social media and often talked about making music. When Lil Jojo was killed in September of that year, Bostrell wanted revenge. Duchy had to serve six months in jail. Bostrell no longer had his partner in crime. Around this time, Bostrell went to live with his girlfriend and her family on the 2600 block of West 83rd Street. 
While staying there, his girlfriend's brother had allegedly stole one of his guns. Bostrel and his girlfriend gets into it, and Bostrel moves out. It's unclear where Bostrel was living at this time. Some say he had his own place somewhere on St. Lawrence. He also had a vehicle. Bostrel spent most of his time in the house playing his PlayStation. Call of Duty was his favorite game. Although he was a killer he still made money. His customers came to him. Bostrel knew how to move. It was difficult for the ops to touch him. Around this time he gets into it with Kayla B on social media. Bostrel planned to move to Iowa and live with some friends. He was ready to change his life. After saving up money Bostrel purchased a bus ticket to Iowa. He planned on leaving November 7th. But first he wanted his gun back from his ex-girlfriend's brother. After asking several STL members to come with him to get back the gun, Bostrel decided to go by himself when they all refused to help. On the morning of November 7th, Bostrel allegedly dressed up as a female and made his way over to his ex-girlfriend's home. He was coming to kill her brother before going to Iowa. It would have been a successful hit if Bostrel wasn't texting her phone hours prior making threats. Her brother and his friends were allegedly waiting in the gangway for Bostrel to arrive. The female's brother was allegedly a member of a gang by the name of Quiet Money. Quiet Money is a mostly black disciple gang located on 83rd Street. Members of Quiet Money were friends with Oak Block member King Vaughn. Bostrel arrived around 6.15 am. Members of Quiet Money allegedly come out of the cut and jumped him in the gangway. The bullet struck Bostrel in the back of the head. At around 6.50, Bostrel was found laying in the gangway. A Glock semi-automatic was found underneath him, and a bus ticket to Iowa was found in his pocket. Bostrel was rushed to Advocate Christ Medical Center in Oak Lawn. Latafra and other family members rushed to the hospital to see Bostrel. FBG Duck and other STL members rushed to the hospital also. A brain-dead Bostrel was on a breathing machine. It wasn't much more the doctors could do. Family and friends said their final goodbyes. At 11.30 p.m., Bostrel was pronounced dead. He was 17 years old. Dutchie had to mourn alone in a jail cell. Many believed that if Dutchie was free Bostrel would still be alive. Dutchie wouldn't have let Bostrel slide alone. Many STL, EBT, Jero City and even mob members were heartbroken about Bostrel. He was loved in the neighborhood. Taffer got Bostrel's name tattooed on her face shortly after his death. She later moved to Minnesota to start a new life. In April of 2020 she was found dead. The cause of death is unknown. Well, this was the Bostrel story. Thank you all for watching. See you next time.